Yeah, the sight, sound, the body, heat. Ho, WFUNK. Hope you enjoyed those two tracks, two original Hensley Foster tracks. You started out with Maybe the Day, taking you way back with the vocalist Kitcha Williams. Song written and produced by Victor, uh, excuse me, not Victor, Irvin Foster and myself. That's all right. Give me the credit, man. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I was the lyricist on that first track, and I mixed and recorded all of this. This is Jazz Mataz. Sat at number two at the Acid Jazz Charts at mb3.com for over six weeks. Hope you enjoy that. Yeah, man, that's hey. nice one. Taking me back. All so right. You like the bass player on it. You like you like pace on this. Yeah, we, the, yeah. the same brother playing bass and guitar. Yeah. On all of my CDs. Yeah. Robert Pace. We call him the pacemaker. Yeah. Ho! W E F U N K. Live. Whoa. Well, there you go. That's called. Uh, that's like I didn't finish the <laughs> intro. The ending. That's what I'm saying. You know, sometimes you have trouble with those endings. <laughs> That's what you know, I'm that's always back in the day. You know what? You know what? Remember, you always said that. Uh, that's what most of the women complained about. You said you never could t- top it off. I didn't finish like I started. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed that whole first segment of the show. That whole first hour, dedicated to our visit by R and B soul saxophonist, yep. Jakeem uh, Joiner. Uh, man, wonderful, wonderful brother, wonderful vibe, wonderful energy, Jakeem Joyner. We played his EPK. Uh, we also played that piece of him jamming uh, to Herbie Hancock's classic chameleon. Yeah. Man, man gifted brother, playing with Keiko Matsui. Going to be live, like you said, this this weekend. Oh, you can't wait for this one. Man, huh? I have to get out and check that out. <laughs> so remember. that's just wonderful. In studio. So we're going to have more of these kinds of things and get some in-studio performances also. All right. Yeah, now back to the matter at hand. Well, let me tell you one of the things we we had. There's a bunch of stuff we had we wanted to talk about, uh, but you know, so much, we're going to go through it and just really save a bunch of things as much as we can for um, next week because we have more music. We have at least like, we have a couple music pieces that I really want to play for you, uh, um, uh, but uh, I guess we'll do one of them and maybe we'll save one for next week. But let me just tell you guys some of the stuff that we'll be talking that that's really going around the news that we thought was kind of interesting. Oh, by the way, Victor, tomorrow night, right? Yes, sir. You tell I, me, tell them about the filming that you're going to be doing tomorrow night. Yeah, actually, we have a little highlight here at uh, PacStereo TV. Take a look. I got a picture. Slash live too. morning coffee. Go to uh, Indambi. She'll be performing at BHCP Live. You know, that's Baldwin Hills Crenshaw Plaza Live. And uh, she, you know what? I like her stuff, man. It's going to be hot. You know, Torquase is going to go out there. You know, I call her the fitness guru. And then I'll run in place just to get a workout and then pray for forgiveness. But that'll be our coverage, man. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully we may get an interview, Mario. We're not sure. Not sure. Working on that right now. All right. That'll be it. Well, let me tell you some of the news that we were going to cover today that we're going to put off for next week, okay? And I'll make some notes that we're going to put it off for next week. Yeah. Uh, one, we really wanted to go over this whole issue of transgender athletes because it's becoming an issue more and more as we attempt to deal with this. Right. Lana Lawless, right? Yes, that correct. That you talked about. Yeah. And also we, had, we wanted to talk about another uh, high school athlete who stands poised to be one of the first transgender athletes high school athletes to compete, and it raises this whole issue of how to deal with transgender athletes. Mm. So we're going to talk about that. You know, we're so progressive here. <laughs> you're, you're Plus, we talk about the difficult, well, it's the difficult stuff. Well, the, the hard part is, is that when you look at that Atlanta Lawless thing, it's, it's amazing that you go, what's the difference between civil rights and the right at birth versus the right to transform? That's right. <laughs> it's going to be issue. It's going to be an issue ongoing. I don't think there's ever going to be a absolute majority and i think majority changes as time evolves all right well we're going to talk about that we're going to also get the political brother in here next week because he's going to wade in weigh in on some of the wikileaks issues and whether where we stand on wikileaks and what what do you stand on wikileaks and the whole issue of how much secrecy how much member your president promised a new open government yes sir okay (laughs) okay (laughs) okay we're going to talk about that uh we're going to deal with that the political brother Mm. All right, we're also going to, well, let's see what else we're going to deal with next week. So a lot of politics we're going to deal with next week. Now, you guys, for today, I don't know if you guys realize, but CBS is going to overhaul the morning show. Uh, when you say overhaul, what is New that people, mean? they're looking at getting new hosts because they have what? bad numbers. They want to be more like morning coffee. Oh, is that it? 
So they wait were, a minute. They want to be more is, like Monica. Now, is Hasselback going to CBS or is that a different? That's a different one. Different one? Okay. Well, I'm trying Hasselbeck, to follow it. I'm trying to follow it. Yeah, that. Hasselback. I don't know about Hasselback. Yeah. So wait a minute. Did they uh, attribute the the loss in viewership to any particular uh, specifics that you can quote? Or are they just saying we're just trying boring to... Boring people. Got you. Boring people delivering All right. stories in a boring way. Oh. And, what? and not having enough faces of color. <laughs> I want everybody to remember this is at the hour and twenty minutes. No, hour and five minutes. So when you want to go back, I don't mean just black <laughs> folks. Sometimes you just got to have a little more color, and, that, and sometimes that's just some olive. Well, no, that's I agree. Some Middle Eastern color, right? You know what I'm saying? A little Middle, middle Eastern flavor. Anything might give you a little something, something. No, I agree. I agree. But I'm not saying it even. So, and, and, and white folks come in different. Flavors of colors. So what I mean is, don't be so maybe mainstream. You know, I understand. Mix it up. You know, yeah, even yeah. with right. age, it doesn't have to be so much. Right. It could be a youthful hue. No, I agree. I think, it, and it's not about whether it's a white or black thing. I think just the right. alternatives that people are now. You know, look, look how the media that matters, and you know, you think about everything you, you're going through and how it's dropped in your lap, and you get that alternative to go out and touch and find other in, forms of entertainment. Look what happens. Takes away from the time that you're looking at the main screen, main channels. You're not looking at them as much. So well, it's not that you're trying to go re- rebel against them. You just have an alternative. It's a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong. Dude, you, those same cats, if they came over here and said, look, we want to give you some money to gangster up our viewership, would you say yes or no? I say you can always give me money. You didn't answer the question. Oh yeah, they want me. I can help them. I can help them. <laughs> See, so I can help them wait. with their viewership by helping them to come to the light. <laughs> See, that's what come I'm to the light. <laughs> See, See, cast out Satan. <laughs> Cast him out. Okay, so in other words, what Mario's saying is... Cast out Satan. If they say we want morning coffee, but we don't want it to be an internet show, we want to bring it to a traditional medium, and we're going to we're gonna start you off with a couple of uh, million a year. Do you want to Cu- give up... You say a couple million, A Cu- couple of million. A couple million. Cu- a couple. Yeah. A couple million. Yeah. It makes you think, don't it? <laughs> you can always change the show. For, you can go from morning coffee to... Lunchtime soda. It doesn't matter. I can always start another show, but you don't. Remember, there's a story, Mario, from somebody who said, you know what? I passed up a $7 million contract to prove a point. And they are still what? You remember that story? You're right. The cat came in the studio. You're right. All right. Well, since, okay. <laughs> since Vic put it that way, I guess it's time to have a moment of reflection. And when I want to reflect, ladies and gentlemen, when I need a moment of reflection, I sometimes have to go to the resources that are most excellent on the internet. And that's why I go to Mac McAllister. That's right. Mm. Our GNM bureau chief up there in Port Townsend. Mm. When I need a moment to reflect upon the true meaning of life, I sit back, put on some comfortable shoes, <laughs> and listen to the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful meanderings. <laughs> that's a visual. Comfortable shoes. I mean, you're supposed to make it a little vision. bit. Vision. I listen you're to the vision. Make, make it a little bit colorful. Even fake. A it. Mac McAllister and the Mac McAllister Journal. And so Mac had me reflecting, as he so often does, Vic. He so often does. He has me reflecting as I listen to his shows right. late night. No, uh-huh. And this time he had me reflecting on the journey of love gone bad. Uh-huh. We'll be at, we'll watch a little of this and then we'll get into some. New new sports. 